Hey there. Today's topic was inspired by a picture in this copy of Sports Illustrated. Now, the topic's not really of sports. The topic is actually sports crushes. And before I get into it and show you this picture, I just want to say two things. One, I love my wife very much, and I don't want to say anything that people take as being disrespectful to my wife. I feel you can never be too old or too married to have a crush. As long as it's an innocent crush on someone that you've never met and have no intention of meeting. You know, just admiring them. You know, if you, know, if you have a crush on a movie star and you're married, that's fine. If you're married and you have a crush on a new college intern in your office, that's not fine. That can get you into trouble. Matter of fact, it can get you impeached. Which, once again, argues for having crushes on unattainable movie star types. Because if Bill Clinton had been fantasizing about some m movie star rather than going after Monica, well, he wouldn't have gotten in trouble. Gore probably would have won the election and he wouldn't be in Iraq. So, yes, don't worry about fantasizing about movie stars and all that. That's a good thing. Number two. Um, a video about crushes, I know, probably isn't going to appeal to a lot of my audience because... Yes, I pay attention, and I do realize that a very high percentage of my viewers are gay men, and quite a few of the people that comment, I guess another decent percentage, are straight women. So those folks probably aren't going to care much. Though I do have some straight male viewers, and I don't know, I have some bisexual viewers, and I may have some lesbian women viewers, I'm not sure. But in any case, if you're one of those people, this video is for you. Specifically, this picture here is for you. There we go. Uh, yes, let me get you a nice, nice view there. Now, for those of you who think that, um, uh, you know, uh, Maria Sharapova is the most attractive female tennis player, I say, take a look at this and think again. Now, not gonna say much because I don't want to seem lecherous and creepy. I'll just let the picture speak for itself, and I'll just say this is Anna Ivanovich. She's playing in the French Open Finals tomorrow. She's now the number one ranked woman tennis player in the world. And she's someone I spoke about a couple of months ago in my Who's Hot video. And from this picture, I can tell that hotness has not decreased a bit. As a matter of fact, I've decided she now gets to be part of my very exclusive pantheon of sports crushes. And there have only been four and it only happens about once every 10 years. So I'm going to tell you about those. Sports crush number one happened in 1976. Only six years old. Watching the 1976 Summer Olympics. Watching gymnastics. You know where this is going. And I saw her. Nadia Comaneci. And oh my god. Ooh. Yes. Only six years old, but... Oh, I... I just sit there with my family and watch the Olympics and just hope that gymnastics would come on again. I mean, I had it so so hard for Nadia that I remember years later when I was an adult, when I found out that she had married Bart Connor, who was an American gymnast. Even though I never intended to date her or marry her, I still felt like a little, you know, knot in my stomach. Like, oh, she's getting married. So yeah, those old feelings die hard. I should also mention, since I started off with tennis, Shortly after that, I did discover Chris Everett, who was very cute, very attractive. And, you know, but she never made the Pantheon because in the 70s, she had that long blonde hair. And she kind of looked like she could be like the older sister of the, of, of the Brady girls. But in the 80s, she went with that short perm kind of frosted hair. And, you know, instead of looking like someone you'd want to date, she looked like the mom of someone you might want to date. And I'm not talking about like a milfy mom. I mean like, I'm talking like head of the PTA mom. So that kind of was kind of buzzkill for me. So no, Chris Everett never made the Pantheon. Um, I mean, after Nadia, it was mostly figure skaters. You know, figure skater after figure skater. I mean, they're graceful. A lot of them are beautiful, nice toned legs and all. So, um, of course, the figure skater of figure skaters, and probably not hard to guess, Katarina Vitt. Oh, yeah. Got to watch her for two Olympics, so that was a, that was a good thing. Two Olympics. Um, not much I can say that hasn't already been said about Canada in a bit. All I will say is that um, 
I actually think the pair skater, Katerina Gordieva, who was married to Sergei Grinkov, who tragically died. Katerina Gordieva, I thought, is actually a lot better looking than Katerina Witt. However, you know, her husband died in a, you know, died tragically, and I don't know, it just feels wrong to have her crush on a woman who was recently widowed. It just doesn't feel right. So, yeah, I never had a big crush on her, though, you know, purely from an objective standpoint, she is more attractive than Katerina Witt. Um, okay, so after Katerina Witt, it was a while, you know. Not too many big-time crushes came on the scene. Then, in 1995, I'm watching a a video, I think a Nike commercial advertising the 1995 Women's World Cup. And I saw Mia Hamm for the first time. And that was the third person to be added to my sports crush pantheon. And my attraction to Mia Hamm is really interesting in the sense that most other women I have crushes on, sports women, you see, when you see, you see them wearing like regular clothes, they look just as attractive to you. But not that way with Mia Hamm. Mia Hamm... I'm really only attracted to her, and believe me, very attracted to her, when she's wearing the soccer outfit, you know, the number nine with the, with the ponytail and like the shin guards on the front of the legs. For one reason or another, that, that turns me on. I mean, not that outfit in general, but that outfit on Mia Hamm turns me on. And, you know, the, theoretically, if I were to have a fantasy about her, not that I, that I have, but theoretically, I was gonna have a fantasy about her. She wouldn't like be wearing lingerie or anything. She'd be wearing that soccer outfit. So that I think is actually maybe the most pure sports crush because I'm really attracted to her in her sports gear. And okay, well, you know, after Mia Hamm, and by the way, good going, no more. Um, after Mia Hamm, <laughs> years and years went by before someone else came on the scene, and now Anna has come on the scene. Um, so she gets added to that list of you know of sports crushes. Um, so that's cool. I'll be rooting for her tomorrow. Maybe she'll get a more commercials, which, which would be nice. Um, now you may have noticed um, some of these names, you know, Nadia, Katarina, actually two Katarinas as I mentioned, you know, and Anna. And yes, okay. Maybe I have a thing. No, I do have a thing for Eastern European women. I just wanted to point that out. Um, and you know, Hey, I do. Okay. Um, I think the two types of women I'm probably most attracted to. Um, I mean, one I obviously can't hide. I'm married to an Asian American woman, and yes, okay. So basically, I'm mostly attracted to Asian women and Eastern European women. I don't think it's creepy or fetish or anything like that. It's just it's just a fact, you know. I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's anything that you know I emphasize in my videos is that. You know, people are attracted to whoever they're attracted to. I mean, some men are attracted to men. Some men are attracted to women. Some women are attracted to men. Some women are attracted to women. And it's all, and some people are attracted to both. And it's all well and good. And some men happen to be mostly attracted to Asian women and Eastern European women. Yeah, that's, that's the way it goes. Um, that's the way I swing, so to speak, okay? Um, yeah, I mean, I think since I turned, since I started high school, Actually, see, all my crushes in school crushes up through junior high school were on Italian girls, but only because my neighborhood was 85% Italian, so the only girls there were Italian or half Italian. Once I went someplace where the girls weren't all Italian, then it started to be all, you know, Asian girls and Eastern European girls. In fact, the only girls I was romantically interested in from high school on that I ever kind of made a play for were Asian girls and Eastern European girls. Um, Actually, just one Eastern European girl. There was this Latvian girl. And, uh, I just... There's actually, there's a funny story about the Latvian girl. Um, but, you know, I'm running out of time, and that's a story for another time. So, um, once again, a little self-indulgent video, but, you know, it's, what is it? Look at, look at the time. It's like, uh, 12.25 or something. I mean, I gotta go to bed. I'm just having fun. So, having fun, and, uh, hey, thanks for watching, and I'll, I'll see you next time.